Oh, yeah? Yeah, you'll have to check it out and see what it looks like. Hello! <clears throat> Nobody is there. There we go. No, it's me. What's up, Mr. Hippo? Hi, Madison. So, how's everybody doing tonight? Hi, new kid. How's the picture look? Good? <laughs> Looks good. We're gonna do a little real cleaning tonight and then questions and answers. Anybody have any questions about anything? Or fishing and real, fish real, fishing real cleaning or servicing or whatever. We'll talk about that stuff as we go. We'll just wait a little bit here and let some people show up. So I put a little pole on my, uh, what's up, Chad? I put a pole on my, uh, on my live stream. Tell me if you guys see it. What's up, Lane? I put a pole on there so you guys can answer the question. Is it show, does it show up? I'm talking to my wife. It should be on the actual video. Huh. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's... I don't know how to find it, I guess. Yeah, I do need to shave, don't I? Getting a little fuzzy. So, I don't know. You guys let me know. I put this poll on... Uh, so, like, you can take a... Answer the poll, like a... Opinion poll or whatever. I put... I, it's supposed to be on the live stream somewhere. I don't know how... I've never done it before, so I don't know exactly where it's going to pop up. It said it would be like a little card up in the corner of the screen or something. You're working on a year? Is that how long it's been, Chad, since he shaved? <laughs> I bet that's amazing. So, Mr. Hippo says, any real recommendations? Well, yeah, I've got um, several different reels that I, pref that I like. Um, I like to try different stuff, so... Um, you know, I can't really say that, um, I can't really say that, um, I, you know, I go with any one particular brand. Hey, Kyle Stoos. Kyle Stoos is a buddy of mine. I've never seen him on one of my live streams yet, though. <laughs> Breck and Cody says reels are <laughs> too expensive. Keegan says back to the old grind. Oh. Yeah, we're, here we are back to the old grind. Lily figured it out. What? You there's, found the pole? Yeah, there's a little eye at the top of the screen, and you click it, and it comes up. Hey, Dan. Hey, Kipper White. Okay, so I put a little pole at the uh, on the live stream. So you should see, like, a little eye up in the corner. And if you click on that, um, you can vote uh, in the poll. On, basically, it just it's a, it's a question. You guys can answer that, and then we'll see um, what the results are. Okay, so back to the first question we had, which was from Mr. Hippo. He says, any real recommendations? Well, I really like lose reels. Um, I have a couple lose reels. Um, and then I mostly use Abu Garcia and Fluger. Abu Garcia, Fluger, and Lose. Those are the main ones that I use. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot of different reels out there. There's, uh, you know, 13 is a good brand and I've tried, I've used some of those before, both spinning reels and um, a bait caster. Actually, Chad on here, he, he has a, a 13 bait caster that I used. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, these are the main reels that I've used is Abu Garcia, Luz, and Fluger. I do really like them. A couple of reels I've had some issues with is um, this Quantum reel. I have this Quantum reel. Uh, it's a Quantum Team KVD. 
And I'm not really sure what's wrong with it, but it has some issues. I know that I took this out wader fishing with me one day, and I'm pretty sure I dipped it in the water once, and I didn't do a good job of cleaning it out when I got back home. So that might be why it has some issues, but, um, but I'm not sure. Um, and then I had one other reel that I had some issues with, and I'm trying to figure it out and work on it, but it's a, it's a cast king reel. And um, I got this reel, and it was really inexpensive, and I thought, um, you know, it worked really good off, off, you know, to start with. But I had some issues with that, and um, I need to reach out to Cast King and see if they can help me fix those issues. All right. Uh, let's see. Sitting in the old Hacienda. Brecken says reels are too expensive. Yeah, but you got to have reels. Brecken's hungry for open water. Okay, so let's see. What about St. Croix? St. Croix, do they, I don't think they make reels. I think they just make rods. Um, okay, so Kipper White says, Ever said problem level wind won't run. Now thinking about taking level wind off, but not sure of getting it back together. He has okay. a prior post. Oh, okay, hold on. Oh, got an old Abu round, black round reel. Uh, lost the cover on the bottom of the level wind and spring. I guess any info about fixing it is appreciated. Only bait cast reel and I miss it a lot. Um, I guess I don't know the answer to that. I don't have a, a round Abu Garcia one. In fact, I don't even have an Abu Garcia reel on the table right now. I have one here, but it's not a round one. And this reel, the level wind, has um, it has a little pin there, or like a C-clip that you can take off to take it out. But I've never taken one out before. Um, I know there's lots of places that can fix your reel and work on it um, for something like that. I don't know, um, you know, obviously I don't know where you live or what you can find where you're at, but... Um, I know where I'm at, there's a place uh, just like 30 miles away. I can take reels up there and work on them, and they'll work on them for me. Um, so, I mean, you, you might have to find something like that. Or you go to YouTube, uh, where we're at right now, and you should be able to find pretty much find a video on, on pretty much anything. So, um, Kipper White, that's what I would suggest you do. Um, get onto YouTube, search for your model of reel and um, see if there's any information on there on how to fix it. Lane Smith says he loves St. Croix. I've only used a couple St. Croix rods. They work really well. They're a little bit spendy for my blood. Uh, might be able to get parts for the Abu. I know 13 Fishing has parts kits and upgrades kits. You can definitely um, get um, parts for your Abu Garcia. They You can get all kinds of spare parts for it. In fact, you can just search for them and find them on Amazon, or you can go straight to Abu Garcia and they have the parts. Um, <laughs> Lane says, who does my taxidermy? I don't have any fish hanging on the wall. What's up, Caleb? Caleb and I went fishing the other day. Uh, I've used some Shimano's. I've never owned one, though, Kyle. You have some Shimano's, don't you? I've used some Shimano spinning reels. Um, they were not mine, though. They were a friend of mine when we were fishing. We were doing some pan fishing. Carbonite, carbon light. Herb Mahoney says carbon light. That's right. That's uh, the Bass Pro Shops brand is, is carbon light. I've never tried those either. I know Keegan has, Keegan Svensson, he's, he was on here earlier. He has a, a carbon light rod and reel and, and he likes it quite a bit. Okay, YouTube, good idea. <laughs> Will do. That's right. YouTube's got everything. Yeah, them big old round reels, they work forever. They do work, work good. Caleb is the walleye guy. He took me out and got me on some walleyes. So, let's see. What do you guys want me to do here? You guys want me to just keep chatting, or should I go and start cleaning my reels? So, I was going to clean all my reels today, and my wife says, well, why don't you live stream that? So, that's what we're doing. And then we can talk about it, answer any questions. Kyle Stu says, spinning reels. Um... I do. I I didn't even bring spinning reels in today. I just was going to go over bait casters. Uh, for spinning reels, I have a couple of Abu Garcias, some Flugers, and a Luz. Ch 
Chad Stinson, he's got an old Fluger of Grandpa's working pretty good last year. Uh, very archaic compared to compared to modern reels. Yeah, those are cool, the antique reels. I got some zombie worms, Kipper White. Okay, so here we go. Let's just break this down real quick. We'll talk about how you should um, clean and service your reel to take care of it during uh, during the off season, or you should actually, you know, if you fish a lot, you should probably do this a couple times a year, maybe. Um, and that's kind of what I put in the poll. If you guys haven't checked out the poll yet. Um, you know, how often do you clean your reels? Um, if you're if you're fishing tournaments and stuff, those guys clean their reels all the time. So they're um, the guys that fish for a living. They're constantly taking care of their gear. Um, I would love to fish for a living, but I don't. So I try and do it a couple times a year. Or if I have an issue, then I'll do it, which is probably not enough. Um, and to be completely honest, up until probably two or three years ago, well, probably three or four years ago, I didn't really do a good job of cleaning or uh, maintaining my reels really at all. Um, I just didn't think about it. And then when it was time to go fishing, it was like, you know what? I'm going fishing. I don't have time for this stuff. So so that's kind of how I did things, which is kind of the wrong way to do things. Uh, I'll be right back. i got to okay. get some tape. What's up? Okay, peeps. What are you doing? So you need to click on the picture oh. and then press the I. And then, yeah, the pole comes out. There you go. I also put a link there um, to a video um, where I, I show you how to clean bait casting reels. I made that video like a year ago or more. And um, it... Uh, Basically, is what we're going to go through today. So, if you don't want to sit here through the live stream, you can always check that out too. Um, so, first thing I like to do is take some tape. Okay, so unless I'm going to restring my reel or if I'm going to put new line on it, um, I like to tape that line down so that it doesn't cause me any issues when I'm tearing it apart, taking my my reel apart. So, I just put a piece of tape on that line. Because when you take the spool out of the reel, it just fits. Um, it just fits out of the reel uh, body. So <clears throat> sometimes it can be kind of a pain in the butt to get that tail end back in there without causing any issues. So this is my Lose Speed Spool Tournament MB. And um, I'll just kind of show you how it comes apart. So you have this little pin right here. I don't know how, if, how well you can see that. You just pull that and twist. I can do it. And then you can turn the side plate. Then you just pull the side plate off, and you can pull the spool out. Just like that. So that's pretty simple, taking it down like that. And then what I like to do is just kind of clean the reel up. Uh, actually, I should have shown you that before. I like to clean the reel up before I take it apart. And um, I'll just set this one aside and do that with a different one. So <clears throat> first thing to do, and I should have, I kind of messed up, is just clean the outside of the reel. So obviously when you fish, um, you're gonna get lots of gunk in there, especially if you're bass fishing, uh, like fishing in, um, you know, slop and stuff like that. Um, your reel is just gonna get dirty, you know, grimy, stuff like that. And you just want to clean that up just so first off um, so your reels nice and clean and secondly so when you're cleaning the internals of your reel you don't have a bunch of dirt laying around um, that can get inside and, and damage anything so what I like to do is just take a washcloth and a toothbrush so I have just a, a bowl of water and I have it over here because I don't want to spill it on my computer so I just take a bowl of water and a washcloth and just wipe it up. I mean, you don't need to have anything special. Um, somebody asked me the other day what I use to, to clean my fishing reels, like alcohol wipes or something. And um, I'm sure you could use that just fine, but typically I just use something like this. Just clean it up. You're just cleaning dirt off, so you don't need anything special. You know, you get some oily grime in there too. Um, 
Because, you know, obviously there's grease and oil that your fishing reel has um, to lubricate it and things like that. So I just use a, a washcloth and get down in there and clean it out. In some spots, like here by the by the handle in there, it's kind of tough to get to. So the toothbrush really works well to just get in there and clean that crud out of there. You just go back and wipe it up. Now, I mean, I'm not too particular. I'm not looking to have, you know, wax these things or have them shine in like a new car or something. But I just want it to be clean and functional. And I mean, that's about it. Just a few minutes there, and we pretty well got it cleaned up on the outside. Now, there's a couple other spots that are hard to get to. One of them is right around the level wind. So right in there, that goes back and forth. That's kind of hard to get to, and that is always dirty because when you're fishing, anything that comes up on the line is going to get kind of scraped off right in there. So you kind of have to reel that over to one side and then just get in there and clean it up. Now, you can use Q-tips for this too. Um, they work just fine. I don't have any uh, sitting here right now, so I meant to grab some before I started, but I didn't. brecken has got a question. All right. So, Brecken says my star drag, star drag on my Abu Garcia Black Max. Uh, the drag is really loose, but I can tighten the drag. Can't tighten the drag anymore. Uh, because I can't turn the star drag because it's too tight. Got any tips? Okay, um, first off, Brecken, do you have braided line on that reel? Let me know if you have braided line on that reel. Um, if you have braided line, I actually had this with a Black Max uh, when I was learning some stuff. Okay, do you have backing line on that braided line? So is it just braided line or do you have monofilament line on the spool and then you tied the braided line to the monofilament line? Ghost drag. Okay, so that's the problem. If you don't have backing line, your drag is tight. It's already tight on your reel. It can't get any tighter like you just said. You got to have backing line or you got to have a way to keep that braided line from spinning. The braided line will just slide on the spool. I couldn't believe it myself, but I had the same problem. And I actually sent my reel off to somebody to get looked at. And they just said, oh, well, you don't have backing line on. That's why your line is doing this. So that's what you got to do. You got to take off all your line and put backing on it. Or something else you can do, you can pull all that line out of there, Brecken, because I know you don't want to buy more line. Pull all that line out there, like have your dad help you run across the yard or whatever. Pull all your line out, and then when you get right down to the spool, take a piece of electrical tape, black electrical tape, and put it on the line on your spool, and then start reeling it up. Then it won't slip anymore, um, and then you, don't, you won't have that issue. Your drag is fine, I guarantee it. I had the same problem on two different reels, and somebody set me straight, and I was kind of embarrassed, but no need to be embarrassed. That's, you know, we, we learned things. Learn things that way. Yeah, Chad says he Chad Stinson says he lost a really good fish because of that. Oh, so you have an issue. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's if you're tightening it all the way down, then you probably have a a problem with the discs that the drag is made up with little discs. Uh, kind of like clutch almost on a car. Um, you probably have, those are probably um, wore out. So Brecken, because I know where you live, what I would suggest is you take that reel up to the Fisherman's Factory outlet in uh, Spirit Lake and talk to them about getting it worked on because they can fix it for you. I had the same issue, but it, was a, it wasn't drag. It was, it was because of uh, my line. So that would be what I would do, try and find someone to work on it. I don't, 
I guess I've never really torn a drag apart and fixed it. Um, I had a buddy that fixed mine for me or told me um, he was looking into it. He told me <laughs> that I needed to put backing line on. So another, like I said, a Q-tip works really good to clean in and around here. Um, and I like to use a Q-tip on the external part of the rail, but I don't use it on the inside. And I know um, you, if you've seen anybody else do it, you know, I don't know, I've seen a lot of guys that use Q-tips on the internal portions of the reel. And I don't do that, uh, basically because, see all these little fibers? All these little pieces of cotton? They're like little strings, right? And um, those little strings can come off of there. And those little strings can get in like your bearing, which is right in the center there. That's your bearing. And if a little string gets in there, it can actually damage the bearing um, or cause it to fail prematurely or not work like it's supposed to. So Brecken says his uncle used the reel for eight years before he gave it to me. So it's been in use for a long time. Uh, I know it can be fixed and probably for really cheap. Um, I know you can get parts and replace that drag. There's just little, there are little uh, fibrous discs, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure. And um, you can just replace them if that's the issue, which it probably is. <clears throat> So I'm cleaning away, just trying to get this junk out of here. And a lot of this stuff, you know, it's not real critical for it to be clean, but it can really build up over time if you let it go. And it can get pretty gunky, so you want to clean it up so it doesn't get overly out of control, you know. I actually, when I first started <laughs> cleaning reels, Man, I had some nasty reels that I hadn't cleaned in a while, or ever. <sighs> so if you clean them every once in a while, then just last so much longer. <sighs> and then of course you gotta oil them and grease them and whatnot. Gun, gun cleaning kit, so that's actually what I was gonna tell you guys. I'll, sh I'll show you that in a little bit here. Uh, Chad Stinson says he likes clean patches from a gun cleaning kit for the internals because they don't really make, uh, they don't leave any lint behind or anything. And that's what I use. That's exactly what I use. I have my gun cleaning kit right over there, um, which I'll grab in a minute. How often should you oil a reel, Bracken? Well, I think if you're fishing, if you're fishing uh, really often, you know, you probably should oil it once a month. If you're not fishing really often, um, if you're fishing, you know, every weekend or something like that, you could probably get away with doing it a couple times a year. Um, you don't really need to uh, get too crazy with it. And, I, and I'll talk about that here in a little bit. I like to do mine um, once at the beginning of the season and then once in the middle. Um, and then I really should do it before I put them away in the wintertime, but I, I typically just... Put them away and let them wait till uh, till the next year. So Chad says, um, so if you're fishing every day, Bracken, then you need to oil it. I would say, you know, once every month or once every couple months. Um, oil versus grease, Chad says, a good topic. So um, I use both, and um, I use grease in some areas and oil in different areas. So. Um, I'll get into that here in a little bit. Hopski's Lounge says he needs to oil his reels. That's right. You need you need to do that. Uh, and J Jason Cobb says don't over lubricate or or uh, over oil. Now I'm not. I don't think that's a, a necessarily a problem. Um, it's not going to damage anything if you over oil or over lubricate. But it's what it's going to do is just it's going to come out of the reel. So then you're going to have oil on your hands. Then you're going to transfer that oil onto your line or your bait. Uh, which, you know, obviously fish don't typically um, eat oil or grease. So, so yeah, you don't really, don't uh, over, try not to over lubricate. And I do that. I try, I try to keep it um, at reasonable levels. 
Uh, you know, Kyle, I don't know if the oil will break down your line or not. I don't know. I, uh, I never checked into that one. So, I'm going to get some gun cleaning patches here. And I just got this gun cleaning kit that I use for uh, cleaning my rifles and pistols. And you can get these. A huge bag of these Winchester or whatever brand gun cleaning patches. This will last you like a lifetime. Um, you can get these for, I don't know what they cost, but they're really cheap. So this is what I like to use. And then I don't have to have my, uh, like I said, um, I don't have to have a Q-tip in there leaving junk behind like a Q-tip does. Okay, so Breck and Cody says, is it true you can put WT-40 on your reels in replacement for oil or grease? Uh, one of my friends I met camping told me that. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't know. I never tried that. Lane, I'm not ignoring you, dude. I'm just trying to stay on topic. Ignoring. Did I say annoying? I meant you annoying you. Um, I don't know about the WD-40. Um, um, I imagine you could. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why you couldn't. My dad was telling me he uses WD-40 for, back in the day, he used WD-40 for fish attracting. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. Is it the best thing you could use? I don't think it probably is. But it would work. So I use this gun cleaning patch, and I just, I'll just feed it in there. Kind of clean out this bearing. Uh, the bearing that's in the side plate. And just... It's really not that dirty. It just has um, a little bit of oil on it from the last time I oiled it. And so that oil kind of turns dark or whatever. And that's all it is. So that's just what I use. And it works really good. So that little bearing is, is pretty well clean. Then what I'll do is, and I have this... Uh, this Bass Pro Shops brand uh, premium real oil it's called and it works pretty good you get this little container it's gonna last a long time there's quite a bit in there you only need a couple drops on this thing you just need uh, one or two drops is all and it it'll soak right into that bearing and when you start to operate the reel it's gonna spin around and and um, you know get all throughout that bearing you don't need to like cover it in oil or coat it in oil or anything like that. It just needs a little bit of it in there. So now I have the spool out and, you know, one thing we talked about is, you know, I don't want to get oil on the line or anything. So I, I try to make sure my fingers are clean before I grab the spool because I don't want to get any oil on the line or anything like that. And like I said, if, you, if, you, if you're going to put new line on your reel, you know, then it doesn't matter. Uh, but I'm not reuse this line yet. I mean, it's still good, so I'm gonna use it. I use braided line for you know as long as it lasts. So what I like to do with the spool and the there's a spool and the axle or spindle, whatever it's whatever you want to call it, and I just like to wipe that down. And like like I said, it's just all that's gonna be on there is like dirty dirty oil. So there's just dirty oil on there. So I'll just wipe that down. And get all that dirty oil off of there, but there's really nothing else that's on there. It's not really, doesn't have any grime or anything like that on it. So I'll just get that off of there. And then on this spool, there's also another bearing. So we have a bearing right here. These round, I guess, I don't know how well you can see that, but that's a bearing. It's just a, like a little round, looks like a wheel. So I want to take and put a couple drops on that as well. Chad says real better is what he uses. No particular reason, just easy to get. And you could spin that around. So I have real butter also. Chad says he uses real ardent real butter, and it works good. I use that for the grease portion um, of of lubricating the reel. There's only a, a couple a couple spots where I use grease. All right, let's see. 
Reckon says he uses Baitmate instead of WD-40. I'm telling you, my dad said back in the day they used WD-40 for for uh, fish attracting. Reckon says come fish in Primgar, come fish in the Primgar golf course pond. My dad is a greenskeeper, so you you could fish it. Hey, I will definitely do that, Brecken. We have to we'll have to arrange something there because I know golf course ponds can be pretty awesome. They don't get, they don't get hit very much, so I'll have to, we'll have to we're gonna have to talk on that, Brecken. Five and six pounders, that's what I'm talking about. All right, so now the next thing we need to do is um, basically the inside of the reel now is done. I just like to clean it clean it off a little bit. Now there there is other internal portions, but I'm gonna, I can get to them from the outside of the reel and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I just kind of wipe this down inside, make sure it's clean. Doesn't have any junk or gunk in there. And then, um, so basically on the inside of the reel right there, you can see, I don't know how well it's gonna show up for you guys. Let's see here. That's, that's like the little drive cog that turns the spindle, turns the spool. So that has some grease in it down in there. Um, so you could put a little bit of grease in there, but there's plenty of grease in there, so I'm not going to add any to this reel. So I'm just going to put this back together. Put the side plate back on. Oh, wait a minute. There's one other spot right here that I missed to oil. So right here is the worm gear, the end of the worm gear for your level wind. And so what I'm going to do is I'll put a little dot of grease, or not grease, but oil right on there. And so that spins right there. So I just put a little dot of oil right there just to lubricate it. Oh, I didn't hold that very good. <laughs> you can see it right there. And I'll just put that back together now. There's a couple more places I'm going to lubricate on this reel. One is the worm gear. So the worm gear is what the level wind travels on. And I just lubricated the end of it. Now I'm gonna actually lubricate the gear itself, um, which is what the, like I said, the level wind, what causes it to go back and forth. Now I've seen guys use grease or oil on this, but I always use grease. It comes from the factory with grease, so I put grease on it. And you don't need a whole bunch. Um, I just put uh, a little dot of it on there. Um, the other thing you can do, you can clean this off a little bit. Um, you can either use a Q-tip and just kind of wipe it down. This is actually a pretty new reel and it's not dirty at all. So I'm not even going to bother with it here. But, um, well, I'll show you guys just to show you. You just take this Q-tip and, and you can see there's some grime on there. It's not too bad. And then you spin it and you wipe it off some more. Run it all the way to the end so you can get most of it. You kind of just have to do it in st stages or steps or whatever so you can try and get it all. Hey, if you guys haven't done it yet, click the little I and um, vote in the poll. I asked, I asked uh, how often you guys clean your reels, so it'll be interesting to see the results. So then I just take this, um, this reel butter and I'll put some on that gear and then just run it back and forth. And then it'll just distribute it along that worm gear. Put another little dot on there. You don't need a whole bunch and just run it back and forth. If you have any excess grease that's that's hanging out in there, you can just wipe it off with a, with a Q-tip or whatever. Um, you don't need to necessarily, but what it'll do is just attract dirt. Dirt will stick to it if you're out and the wind's blowing some dust around or something, it'll stick to that. Okay, so the last thing to to um, 
oil on, well, there's a couple more actually. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. So this reel is a 10 bearing reel. So it actually has a bearing right here. Um, and not all reels have that, but this one does. So <clears throat> you just get your handle where your star drag's right and you can just take that off. And then there's a, a bearing in there. And just like the other bearings, just wipe it down. Just wipe the dirty oil off of it. And then put a couple drops of oil in there. And that that bearing is just on the end of your of your spindle. Or your axle for your for your spool. And I'm having trouble putting it back on. Comes off real easy. <laughs> it's not hard to go back on either. You just gotta get the threads lined up. So with this reel, um, the last thing I need to oil is the gears, the actual gears that turn, make everything operate within the reel. Now, with different reels, you have different ways to get in there. So this reel has a little access port. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but probably not at all. There's like a little door on there. And you can take that little door off and then you can put, um, you can put grease in there and that's what I do um, now other reels you can't do that like this this quantum right here you can't do that so you got to take it all the way apart if you want to grease that um, there is some other kind of creative ways you can get some grease in there if the if it doesn't have a bearing like this one did in the um, in the friction break you can actually get in there and get some grease in there and it'll work its way through there um, which, you know, is probably fine in the middle of the season if you just want to get some grease in there. But um, if you're going to do like a, a good cleaning, then you might want to tear this apart. Now, I would suggest not tearing this apart because um, you got to take you got to take a bunch of stuff off. Like Lane was or uh, Brecken was talking about the drag earlier. You got to take the drag apart and everything. So um, if you tear all this down, just make sure you really know what you're doing and, um, you pay attention when you take it off. So you put it back the same way you took it off. So a <laughs> couple things that you need. I have this screwdriver and it is a, a multi tool type screwdriver, whatever. You just change the ends. And I like this because different, I keep this in my little fishing reel kit or whatever, because um, different reels have different types of screws like this one has a straight straight screw or a standard screwdriver and this one has um, Phillips style so I like to keep this on hand because then I can use uh, can kind of just switch it out and use it for whatever so this one has Phillips style so I'll take this little door off Something else I'll touch base on real quick. When you're tearing your reel apart, obviously you have a little small pieces. Like this screw I'm about to take out is really small. So there's a couple things you can do to prevent from losing that little screw. Because if you drop that little screw, it's going to slide across the table or fall on the ground or whatever. So you just take a washcloth. This is just a washcloth, like a dishcloth. And you just lay it down. And then when you take it out, you take it out there and it'll land on that. It's not going to roll away. Or you can use like a pan or a plate or something like that, a box, whatever you want to do. So I just take this out. And what I like to do is if you back that screw out like halfway and then push on it. And then it pushes that little door out of there for you. So now I can take this out. And now I can access my gears. Let's see, can you see that? Kinda. You can see the gears in there turning. So now I can get in there and I, I can't really clean it up like this, but what I can do is I can add grease to it. 
Yeah. So I can uh, get some grease in there. Now, if if I fish this reel for two or three years or something, I might take it all the way down and clean it up. But uh, since I haven't, it's fairly new. I'll just put um, some grease on there. And I'll just run it through like I did on the worm gear. Just cycle it. Spin that handle around a bunch of times and let that uh, grease distribute. Now this is where I like to use grease because oil isn't really going to hold up here. This is kind of a heavier duty application. The little bearings, they use a little bit of, you know, you put a little bit of oil in there and it'll work just fine. This, we have these gears meshing together um, and grease works better. Just put, put a couple dabs on there and then just run it. And what it'll do is it'll distribute through the other gears that this meshes with. And um, then it'll be all lubricated, good to go. Then you just put that little piece back in there. And put the screw back in and you're done. You're ready for another season of fishing or another month or however, depending on how much you fish. Um, I know guys that definitely they're tearing their reels down a lot more often. I do it probably, like I said, a couple times a year if I'm being if I'm being good. If I'm being lazy, I might only do it once once a season. All right, so a couple things here real quick. I'll just talk about uh, a couple different reel styles and uh, how they come up, come apart. So, for example, on that reel we were just looking at, so to get the side plate off, you got this, you got a pole, this little pin, then you can twist the side plate and it comes off. Um, this one's a little different, this Quantum, it actually has like a little switch down here. So you push this little button, then you can twist it, and now your side plate comes off. And most of them you just put them back the way they to where they were when they when you took them off and you just spin them and they're back locked into place um, this Fluger one right here it actually has a button right here so you use this you push this button and you turn it and then that plate comes off of there this reel is actually really nice and clean I didn't use it much last year. This cast king reel is a little different. It's got a lever on the bottom. So you pull that lever and then you can twist the, the face plate and side plate and now it comes off. So that's basically, um, most of them come apart that way. Some of them have this little screw. So this one, this is a Fluger reel. It has a screw. You got to back this screw out. It's just kind of like the other one that uh, was just like a little pin that you pulled, the spring actuated. Then you can turn and spin that off of there. So, Melinda Cash says hello from Minnesota. Twist and shout. Thanks for stopping by, Melinda. So basically, that's um, that's basically what I do to to clean my uh, my reels. So if you guys have any questions, um, what what are the questions you have? So Brecken says spinning reels. Yeah. I don't have. I didn't bring any spinning reels. I was just gonna go through um, through bait casters, but yeah, I could. I could do. Uh, I would have to do a, a whole different show on spinning reels. It's a whole different story. The other thing with spinning reels is they're all different. Um, most of these reels, bait casters, they're pretty much the same. Um, spinning reels, they don't. They don't come apart as easy, in in my opinion. But yeah, you do definitely want to clean them up because they can get uh, just as grimy. Kirby's Fish and Grill. Thanks for stopping by, Kirby. Kirby lives in California. He's going to move out here to Iowa, so there's some water because he said he's surrounded by dirt and he doesn't get to fish enough. Uh, Lane's going to fall asleep. No problem, Lane. Uh, let's see. Kez Washington. Hey, Kez. Thanks for stopping by. So if you guys just joined us, um, I put a little poll up there so there should be a little eye in the corner that you can click on and then vote 
Um, how often do you clean your fishing reels? So, Kirby, you don't get a fish enough, but you do have really big bass down in Southern California, don't you? I, uh, I'd love to go fishing down there somewhere. All right, well, if uh, anyone has any questions, throw them out there. If you don't, uh, I'm going to just go through a couple things real quick here. Um and go from there. Well, Kirby's 45 minutes from the Arizona border. There's no water there. <laughs> That's a bummer. You haven't caught your first... Keys Washington says he hasn't caught his first largemouth. Well, why not? Get after it. Colorado River has good fishing. Yeah, that would... I bet. That would be cool to fish there. So... I have this reel right here, and um, this is one of my musky reels, and I just want to talk about it real quick. The importance of having the right tools for the job. So I have this little wrench. It's nothing fancy. I got this wrench with a reel that I bought, uh, but it's specifically designed for basically the different sizes that you have on a fishing reel. But uh, what somebody I bought this reel used, and what somebody did was they used like a pliers to take this nut off. And so it's all chewed up. And um, I like to make sure I have the wrench. Um, that way I don't have to worry about wrecking that nut. Because you can actually wreck that and then you're going to have to go get another one. Um, but if you have the right tool, it works really well. So something to think about uh, when you're fishing. You should have a few tools. Maybe not with you when you're out fishing, but if you're going to be fishing as a hobby, you want to have a few tools so you can take your fishing reels uh, apart a little bit if you need to. Um, the other thing is when you when you have a fishing reel that's giving you some issues, you know, don't be too scared to tear into it. They're not that complicated. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is just this really old antique. <laughs> so years ago. Uh, years ago, um, my dad bought this reel, and this is a Black Max. So earlier in the in the broadcast, there, uh, Breck and Cody was talking about a Black Max, and the newer Black Maxes. I actually have one sitting here. This is a new Black Max, which if you guys fish, you know what you know what this is. So this is a new one, and this is the original. And the original, as you can see, is gigantic compared to the new one. Um, this was considered a high-speed reel in its day, and it was like five point. It's like five point two to one. Um, so it's not it's not real fast. Um, the other thing is, look at the difference in the spool. The spool is like super narrow, and it's not doesn't have any holes in it or anything. It's a plastic spool. It's not aluminum. Now we have an aluminum spool. It's got holes drilled in it to reduce the weight. Um, it's a lot um, more streamlined and it's wider so you can get your thumb on it. I'm trying to think, you know, I used to fish with this when I was a kid and I'm trying to think how in the heck I ever got my thumb in there. Um, but it's kind of cool. It's just an old piece that I have that uh, my dad, well, I don't know that he gave it to me, but I definitely took it from him. And, uh, <laughs> But it's, it's pretty neat. This was new. I think this was new in like 1992 or or 1993, something like that. This, this is, you know, like 20 years ago, bass fishing is what what people use. So I don't know if this was top of the line for its day or, or if it was kind of low end. I think it was maybe kind of low end. But this is a three ball bearing reel. Um, nothing too fancy. Now, this is back when Abu Garcia's were made in Sweden still, which is... Uh, which is pretty cool. Good night, Lane. See you tomorrow. So Melinda Cash says stainless uh, Ace Hardware has stainless and chrome nuts and bolts, and that's a good point. So if you have this, get all tore up like this, um, you can go get a new one and put it on there so it looks nice. Um, the other thing, this is actually supposed to have like a, a keeper on there. Like if you look at this, well, that's a bad example. Where's that one? So this actually has like a 
a special nut and then a screw there to keep it from backing out so the nut doesn't back off. This is supposed to have that same thing, but it's it's missing. So, but that's okay. It still works. Still works fine. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this today. Um, if you um, if you took the opportunity to vote in the poll, thanks for doing that. I can't wait to check that out and see. I don't even know how to check that out, so I can't like check it out right now and tell you guys. Well, I don't think so. Maybe I can check. I don't, I don't know. No, I don't know how to see it. So, um, but I, I can't wait to check it out and see, see what people voted. Um, oh, Jeff's on. Jeff Crake, he says he started out with a Zebco 202 and a 404, then went to a Zebco 33. That was 35 years ago. Um, what do I recommend for your first baitcaster? Actually, this is... This is probably the best one right here. Um, this Abu Garcia Black Max. They're really inexpensive. You can get a new one, I think, for like $29 or $39. Um, and they're a good entry level, but they're actually a high-quality reel. I mean, I can go out and fish with this all day long. No problem. It'll, it'll, it'll do the same thing as anything else. So that I would definitely recommend checking that out. Now, there's a lot of different brands out there. Some that I would... Definitely stay away from Shakespeare. Um, you know, they make a lot of good stuff with their spinning reels um, and their Ugly Stick brand rods and stuff. Uh, they're pretty decent, but um, their bait casting reels are atrociously terrible. So uh, don't get one of those. Chad says, same thing. Uh, definitely get the Black Max. You don't want to drop 300 bucks on a reel that you end up hating. What were you going to say? Our old orange one, the one that basically we all learned on what type oh, is that? Oh, a Fluger. We have we have an old Fluger. Um, I can't remember what brand it is. Man, I should have brought it in. Um, our, not what brand, but what model. It's like a Fluger President or something. It probably wasn't cheap, though. It's just old when we got it. But <laughs> it really works really well. Yeah, Keys, definitely check out this reel, this, uh, the, the Black Max. In fact, you can find these things on eBay for like 20, 25 bucks. They're, they're excellent reels. Um, and yeah, then just learn how to use it. There, yeah, my gunner, or my son Gunner is talking about his Fluger. That's what me and my wife are talking about. It's an old orange Fluger, and it works awesome. All my kids use bait casting reels. Uh, we use spin reels too, but um, I taught them all how. I think Gunner, uh, he's been using a bait caster since he was like five years old. Um, yeah, the Silver Max, we have uh, a couple Silver Maxes too. My daughter has a Silver Max. Um, but yeah, I taught my kids how to use a baitcaster. So if, I know some people can get intimidated by baitcasters, but, um, there's no reason to be because anyone can use them. It just takes a little practice. I know a lot of people get frustrated by them, but, uh, yeah, I taught my kids how to do it. What we did, we just took a baitcaster and uh, we did some kind of creative things. We usually would take like an old crankbait or something that that I had that maybe I'd cracked or smacked on a rock or something or the or the um, hooks got you know tore up or something. And we just take the hooks off, tie that lure on there, something that's like a half ounce or bigger, and then um, taught the kids how to cast in the driveway. And if they screwed it up and got a backlash then they would just pick it out and i would teach them how to pick it out and um we had a lot of fun doing that we did some different things like we would take the the line and just screw it under the cap on a water bottle with a, just a little bit of water in there to give them something that was a little easier to lob out there um but they really like having that lure on there so they felt like they're fishing you know it worked really good so kirby says he feels awkward using them see i feel awkward using a spinning rod <laughs> I grew up on bait casters. I had my dad, uh, my dad taught me how when I was a little kid. Yeah, um, okay, so that's a good point. Kirby says I should probably get a left-handed one. I use my right hand to work my lures, and that's what I, that's what, what I get messed up. Okay, so I actually have a daughter. She's 13 now, and um, she's been fishing for a while, and she's been using a bait caster for a while. Well, all my bait casters are right-handed. And she kept telling me, um, 
I need one with it on the left hand side. Now she's right handed, but um, she said she needed one on the left hand side, and you know she was pretty good. She could cast, um, but um, oh my son corrected me. She's not thirteen yet, but she will be soon. <laughs> but anyways. She said, get me a left-handed one, and it'll work better. So I did. I got her a left-handed Black Max, just like this. And um, she was able to use it way better just by switching to a left-handed one instead of a right-handed one. So I would definitely suggest doing that, Kirby. If, if you have a right-handed one and it's awkward for you, get a left-handed one and use it. See, I'm the same way. When I use a spinning reel, um, I reel on the right-hand side. And a lot of guys, they switch it up. And they'll go and reel on the left-hand side when they normally would reel on the right-hand side with the bait caster. Yeah, Melinda, it was a great way to learn. That's how I learned. When I was a kid, I used a spinner rod, and I said, I told my dad, I said, I want to use the reel like you have. And I think I was about eight years old. And he actually painted a target on, we had a big old maple tree in our front yard. He painted a target on that tree with spray paint. And he told me when I could hit that target 10 times in a row from the porch, which is about 20 feet away or something, 25 feet away, then he would let me use one of his bait casters. And that's, that's, how I, uh, that's how I learned. Yeah, Kirby, if you don't want to buy a reel, find someone that's got one that you can borrow and try it. Keys Washington says he used an ugly stick right now with a spinning reel. So I want to learn some different, uh, something different. Can't wait to learn. Yeah, and an ugly stick with a spinning reel will, will do good. Uh, but if you want to get into bait casters, get one of these cheap ones and try it out. It's a lot of fun. I like using both. I uh, I prefer bait casters. I've I'm I've always been a bass fisherman, so I'm always kind of power fishing. I like to fish big lures and I like to fish them fast. And um, you know, it just works better on a bait caster than a than a spinning reel. Lately, though, I've gotten heavily into finesse fishing. Uh, so, like, fishing with a wacky worm or um, a weightless rubber worm. And that really works better on a spinning reel. So, I've been using spinning reels a lot in the last last year and a half, two years. So. All right. Anybody else got any questions? I'll stay on as long as you guys keep asking stuff, but otherwise I'm going to call it a night. All right. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. Um, make sure you head over to my to my channel and... <laughs> head over to my channel and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. I think most of you are, though. Keegan Svensson, he says, when can you come clean my reels? Hey, man. Whenever. If you want to go, if you want to go fishing, uh, you need to, we need to go fishing sometime, but yeah, I'll teach you how to clean your own reels. All right. Thanks everybody. Can you do a review on a medium action ugly stick GX2? I don't have any. Do you have one Brecken? If you do, I'll do a review on it, but I don't, I don't have one. All right, guys, last call. Any more questions? Kirby just bought a GX2. Do a live stream on tying lures, swivel. So, like, tying, what different knots to tie? I actually was going to do a video on the knot that I like to tie for most of my lures this week. Okay, I can try that. I just don't know how well you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. We'll have to try that. We'll try it out. We'll see how it goes. Oh, the, the GX2s are only 15 bucks at the outlet store. Maybe I'll buy one and do a review on it, Brecken. Because <laughs> the outlet store. Me and Brecken, we shop for, for stuff at the same place. All right, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I'm really going to leave this time. If you voted in the poll, thanks for doing that. And uh, make sure you uh, head over to my channel. Check out uh, my latest video. I went out and caught some big walleyes ice fishing. It was a lot of fun. So uh, check that out. Make sure you subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And we'll see you later. Thanks so much.
I'm still on air.